Jerry of the circus. Or Jerry of the circus. Hey, old rag. What are you doing around the backyard on moving night? What's your matter? Oh, I don't believe I understand you as well as Jerry and Bumps do. <laughs> you're, you're certainly trying hard to tell me something, but I'm sorry, Rags. I, I just don't understand all this. <laughs> Jerry! Jerry! <laughs> Where are you, Jerry? Over here at the wagon. Come on, Rags. <laughs> something's wrong, or you wouldn't have come running up to me barking like you did. <laughs> well, we'll find out what the trouble is, Rags. Don't you worry. Well, of all things, Jerry Dugan, what are you sitting here on the steps all alone for? You look as though you've lost your last friend. What's the matter, Jerry? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> oh, no? Come on, now. Honest confession is good for the soul. Honest, nothing's wrong. Well, Rag seems to think there is, and, and I do too. You see? Look at that poor dog stare at you. Now, you haven't got that long face for nothing, Jerry. You can, something's troubling you. Well, if you must know, it's, it's about Spike. Spike? What about him? Well, here we are leaving this town tonight and getting still farther away from him. And uh -huh. I haven't been able to find out a thing. Well... I don't believe I, I understand you, Jerry. I just know he didn't pass that counterfeit money. Well, well, he did spend that one ten-dollar bill and that was counterfeit. You know, he's better when you were with him. I know it, Patsy, but he got that bill from Belko. Belko gave him ten dollars for fixing his trunk. Spike didn't know it was counterfeit. I'm positive. Well, don't take it to heart, though, Jerry. Oh, I can't help it. I, I like Spike, and I'll bet anything in the world that he's innocent. Well, Jerry, you've got to think of yourself, too. You can't help Spike by worrying about him. Uh, were you at dinner tonight? Uh-uh. I wasn't hungry. Mm hmm That's just what I thought. You didn't even go into the mess top, did you? No. You've got to get a hold of yourself, Jerry. You can't go without food. Uh, are you all packed and ready to go down to the station? Uh-huh. Bumps is in with slats getting their props put away. I was just waiting for him. Uh, do you have to wait for him? No. Why? Well, uh, how about you and I walking over to the train together? Will you come with me? If you want me to. Oh, I do. I, I guess Randy will wait here for Bumps, won't he? Sure. Well, come on, then. I, I've got an idea. What is it? I'm going into the restaurant down there at the station and get something to eat. Will you join me? Sure, I'll, I'll go with you, but I don't want anything to eat. Well, now, Jerry, won't you just have a sandwich or a piece of pie and some ice cream? Well... Doesn't that sound good? Well, all right, I'll, I'll get some. Come on, let's hurry, then, so we'll have time to eat before we have to get on the train. <laughs> Some more coffee, gents? No, thanks. Just give us our checks. Okay. Yeah. 20, 15, 25. There you are. Well, here's your check. Thank you. Now, you listen to me, Belko. I'm the brains of this deal. Oh, Slippery Tornetti, the wise guy. You are the brains, are you? Nobody smart, but Slippery, I suppose. Pipe it down and let me talk. Oh, oh all right. All right. 
Now, the reason I wanted to meet you tonight and talk to you is important. What is important? I get this. I don't want you to pass any more dough. Why? Ain't I doing all right? Listen, stupid. Falco is not stupid. The great Falco is smart. Didn't I plant those bills like you told me to? And didn't they get to that fellow Spike? I'm no dummy, Slippery, and I ain't gonna stand for you to call me stupid. All right, all right, all right. You know, stupid. Sure, you did a swell job. Yeah. They got that fellow Spike, and he'll do a long stretch, so that's taken care of. Then why not get rid of some more of the because money? Because the cops think they've got the right guy. Yeah? Well, can't you see? If you go spreading more of that money around, they'll know they make a mistake, or else they didn't get the whole gang, and they'll be hot again. Mm. They'll watch everybody with the circus with an eagle eye, just like they've been doing, you see? Mm, no, I won't pass so much, then. You're not going to pass any. That is a fine thing. You cut me in on this, and then you make me quit. You double-cross me, Slippery. That's what you do. Now, listen. I'm saving you a nice long stretch in jail. Yeah? You told me when I start, I'd be able to make a couple of thousand dollars for myself. All right, all right. You will if you listen. Mm. There's no hurry with this racket. Wait until the circus season is over, and you can start in again. But right now, you got to quit. Can't you understand that if more counterfeit is passed now after they got spiked, mm. they... I know what you mean. Uh, you think the cops will start watching the circus again? Huh? That's right. Uh, that's just what I got through saying a little while ago. Uh, but what if I'm careful? I mean more careful than I'm about. not going over that again. Yeah, but... How much of the money you got left? Not so much. I think maybe a couple of hundred dollars. Okay, uh, give it to me. Mm -hmm. That's one way to make sure you won't pass it. Well, I haven't got it with me. What are you trying to pull? Is this a stunt, no, eh? No, no. I do not go carrying that phony money around on me. I told you, Belko was smart. What is it? I got a trick belt that I wear when I'm doing my act. And it has got a sort of a pocket in it. And I keep the money in there. Uh, where's the belt now? Uh, packed in my trunk. Most likely on the train by now. Your own personal trunk? Yeah. You got it locked? Sure. What you think? I leave it open? All right, all right. Now, get this. Hmm. Tomorrow, I want you to mail that money to me. Understand? Mail it to you. You heard me. Yeah. Make a little package of it and send it to the mail. You know where to send it. Yeah, yeah, I know. All right, then. Be sure you get it off to me tomorrow. Hmm. You know, it's going to be a whole lot safer for me to have counter much money than for you to have it, you know. What do you mean by that? Well, the cops may still watch the circus for a little while yet, and well, you can't tell. It's better to be safe. Oh, hey, I gotta watch my time. That train I catch will be pulling out soon. Uh, are you going to write to me? Oh, sure, sure. We'll keep in touch. I sure want to go back to work for you. It's about the easiest job I ever... Huh? Oh, it's Jerry and Patsy. Hello, Belko. Hey, didn't you get enough supper tonight? <laughs> the great Belko needs a lot of food, Jerry. Oh, hello, Patsy. Hello, Belko. Uh, let's sit up at the counter here, Patsy. Oh, don't you want to sit in one of these booths? No, the counter's all right. Unless you want to sit in a booth. No, no, the counter will do. Well, what'll it be, folks? Mm, what do you say, Jerry? Uh, some kind of a sandwich? I just don't know. Let me look at this menu a minute. Uh, excuse me a minute. I'll have to answer the phone. Oh, all right. There's no hurry. Hey, Patsy. Yes, Jerry? See that man sitting with Belko in the booth? Yes. I wonder who he is. He came back to see Belko last week when we were playing in Lindsay or one of those towns. Oh, he's probably just a friend of Belko's, Jerry. Yeah, I suppose so. Hi. What are you so interested in him for? I think I've seen him someplace before. Well, you just said that you saw him when he came back to see Belko. Yeah, but I mean besides that. Oh. Is he looking this way now? Um, no, they're talking. Then I'm going to take another look at him. Say. What, Jerry? Remember that picture I told you about? No. What picture? I told you Spike gave me a picture of the football team when he was in prison. Oh, oh, that. Uh, yes, uh-huh. And he pointed out the picture of his cellmate. I was just wondering if that's where I could have seen this man. <laughs> now, Jerry, more detective work? You never can tell. Hey, I've got that picture right here in my pocket. I'm going to look. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Let me see it, Jerry. See? This is Spike. Uh -huh. And this man next to him, this is his cellmate, Tony. Oh. Tony. What was his name? Oh, yeah, Tonetti. Hey. Shh, Jerry, not so loud. It's him. See, look at those bushy eyebrows. Hmm. 
Yeah, this picture does look like that man. Uh, I'm sure it's him, Patsy. And if it is... Well, what are you going to do? Is he looking this way now? You can see better than I can. Um, no, no, he's looking straight ahead. Patsy, that's who it is. That man is Tonetti, and he was a counterfeiter. Now I'm getting someplace. Oh, they're getting ready to leave now. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. That was a butcher on the phone. I had to give him my meat order for tomorrow. Oh, that, that's all right. Well, I'll take your order now. Just a, a glass of milk. Oh, I, I thought you were going to have something to eat, Jerry. I haven't got time. You better have milk, too. we got to hurry up and get out of here. No, I see what you mean. Yes, waiter, just a couple of glasses of milk. All right. They're leaving now, Jerry. See, hey, we'll have to hurry. What are you going to do? Well, we'll have to find Mr. Hadley or Mr. Randall and tell them. Bye-bye, Jerry and Patsy. See you on the train. Oh, all right, Belko. Yeah, we'll see you later. Ah, uh, here you are. Hurry up, Patsy, and drink the milk. Hey, here's the money, waiter. Uh, thank you, young man. Gosh, you've got me all excited, Jerry. I believe he is the same man who's on that prison picture with Spike. I know it is. <laughs> I can't drink this milk so fast. Well, come on, then. I, I don't want to let him out of our sight. Good night. Good night. Where did they go now? Oh, there they are. Uh -huh. Hey, that fellow's getting on that train. Was Bilko going with it? Oh, no. No, no, he's just talking to him. Oh, hmm. Just my luck. He's leaving on that train. Now what'll I do? Oh, we better find Mr. Randall and tell him anyway. Yeah, or Mr. Hadley. Come on, Patsy. Well, there goes Bilko back into the station. Good. We'll go right over to Mr. Randall's car. I sure hope he's down here already. Uh-huh. Through this gate. Yeah, that's right. What do you make of all this, Jerry? Lanny. <laughs> it's all happening so fast. I, I can't quite piece it together. Well, I'll tell you just what I think. I think Belko's the one that's been passing the money. You do? I sure do. But, but why Belko? Well, don't you see? The very fact that Belko was talking with... What's his name? Tanetti. Is proof that they've got some dealings together. What else would it be? Oh, uh, yeah, I see what you mean. I wouldn't be surprised if Belko gave Spike that counterfeit bill just so he'd get caught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe even planted all that phony money in his mattress. <laughs> I hope we're not too late, Jerry. I just hope Belko comes along with the circus now. You you don't think he might skip the show? Oh, I sure hope not. Oh, look, Jerry. There's Mr. Randall now, just crossing over by his car. Mr. Randall? Uh, oh, yes, Jerry? Oh, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. Okay, Jerry. Uh, what's in your mind? <laughs> you're, you're all excited. What's wrong? Is Mr. Hadley around any place? Hadley? No, not now, but I expect him before long. Why? Well, I've just made a very important discovery. I, I think I've found out who, who the real counterfeiter is. I only hope I'm not too late. Uh -huh.